Welcome back to the Modern Retail Experience, the series that delves into the latest trends, market changes, and technological advancements that are shaping the world of retail. In this episode, we'll explore how computer vision and AI-powered tools are enhancing visual merchandising strategies, product placements, and store layouts. We'll also discuss how computer vision tech, powered by AI, is improving both convenience and security. But before we get started, don't forget to check out the description below for access to our new website and LinkedIn page, where you'll find news, resources, and exclusive RCA opportunities. Now on to the video. And when I think about visual merchandising in particular, the use of data has just really exploded in recent years. I think so much of what we saw on the shelf was based on color, was based on brand organization, but now we're really seeing so many more merchants thinking about who's coming down the aisle, what else might they be shopping for, what's already in their cart, what is their mindset when they're shopping, and really using a lot of those data and insights to help plan what they put on the shelf. Yeah, so back in 2017, I actually worked on a project with in computer vision focused on visual merchandising. The idea being that we had all these sensors on the ceilings, these often security related cameras and things that were measuring more for prevention. And how could we use them to sort of measure behavior, AI, computer vision, the ability for algorithms to extract some sort of value from those movements becomes really, really interesting. So we could, for instance, start replicating a lot of the same techniques that we use on our websites to measure conversion, traffic, beyond just heat maps. But the real value was more at the display and product level, seeing, okay, how can we measure conversion? Can we A-B test like we do on our websites? If we move these displays around and place them in different parts of the store, we obviously have the POS data that allows us to see, are we selling more or less? But it's also interesting to see are people considering it more, which in physical retail, we haven't had that data as much as we've had it in our digital or on our websites. What does modern mean? I always find that people are looking for five, 10, 20 years down the line. To me, modern means now. And computer vision can be delivered now with at the shelf and retail analytics in the store. Right now, personalization, which is the, the kind of holy grail, is hard except at checkout where you put in your phone number. But the reason it's hard outside of that is because we haven't bridged the divide between the local merchandising at the shelf and the mobile phone. And so that's a really big frontier that we need to conquer so that we can really understand identification of a consumer to personalize ads. But right now we're kind of able with computer vision to personalize by demographic, to personalize when somebody picks up a product to understand what product is in their hand. There's Caper, which is Instacart's smart shopping cart that's now starting to look at ads that are personalized by what's in your cart. All that stuff is possible now. The question is, what is actually affordable and operationally realistic. And there's a lot that is right now. And that to me is modern. You know, one thing I often kind of advise our customers on is you always have to let your brand be your guide. I think every brand really knows who is their target shopper. What is it that they are really looking for from the brand and from the experience? And so any new technology has to really fulfill that brand promise and has to be aligned with what you know your shopper is looking for. So first start with your brand promise when you're trying to figure out what new technology to put in a store environment. We're just starting. The future of this tracks with Moore's Law. You know, as compute becomes more and more powerful and cheaper and cheaper, we're able to put the technologies, the sensors, the measurement, the compute, which is on the cloud and on the edge in this case, they become more and more accessible. Right now, it's, it's a minority of retailers that really can explore these alternatives fully. And they'll do that in very controlled environments, often in lab stores and things like that, or maybe a handful of their more sort of advanced flagship stores that they'll test these technologies. And so, no, we're just scratching the surface of where this can go and learn how our digital behaviors are, import those into the physical environments and blur those two lines like I like to speak about often. I think the biggest barrier to in-store merchandising and technology there is just 
There are too many people involved in the in-store shopping experience and too many dependencies. So for the people, you've got marketing, merchandising, operations, sales, advertising. It's like everybody seems to have to agree to get anything done, which is why stores haven't really changed nearly as much as online or in the supply chain where there's a consolidated decision making kind of organization and a greater data orientation. Right now, I think the big changing force there is the retail media opportunity in store, which is forcing many retailers to look at how merchandising and digital go together. You know, it's interesting. I think one of the earliest uses of cameras in stores was for loss prevention and really monitoring the physical kind of surroundings of a store. Just given the recent increase in organized retail crime in particular, I think there are a lot of retailers that are thinking about how can they better utilize that camera infrastructure and the insights that they may be getting from that video footage to help really stem the rate of organized retail crime that they're seeing. I think this is an area where we've seen a lot of customers utilize the footage, utilize the data to share with law enforcement to study after the fact, think about things like what categories might be most targeted, can those categories be placed in kind of a locked environment. So all of these ways in which that data can be interrogated to change the way the store operates, I think we've seen a lot of really good results from. In our next episode, as part of the Data Driver series, we'll discuss how retailers can get real-time insights into sales inventory and customer behavior using cloud-based analytics and dashboards. To learn more about the Retail Cloud Alliance, don't forget to click the link below and subscribe to our channel so you're first in line to watch the latest episodes.